what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 times seth rollins trolled his opponents man seth rollins is doing some of the best work in his career in my opinion um it's crazy how at one point the fans had really turned on him wasn't really feeling feeling him uh as a baby face he went back heel and then he started wearing the eccentric crazy suits and the obnoxious laugh laughing but he was having some pretty good feuds and uh he's been honestly doing just some of his best work in his career seth rollin is naturally a good heel his first heel run was amazing and this heel run has really definitely just been something to truly enjoy you know he's easily one of the best parts of monday night raw and he is the new united states champion rightfully deserving so i think they're gonna he's gonna really be able to, to expound on what triple h has going on with the mid card championships and putting him in prominent situation prominent showcasing so i believe seth rollins will definitely be able to continue that trend uh but let's get right into this one man appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel Do the damn seth rollins this whole gimmick has been based on him acting as a menace to the wrestling Seth Rollins' whole blocker. gimmick has been <laughs> acting as a menace to the wrestling community. Whether that's playing mind games with his opponents to gain an unfair advantage or messing with fans online with his bizarre tweets. He's exhibited some of these traits in his early stages of his that WWE Amber career, alert. but has taken it to a completely different level ever since he began wearing flashy, over-the-top mm -hmm. suits while ridiculously dancing to his own theme music. The comedic character work he's been putting out has been top tier easily the best any wrestler currently has to offer so it would be a disservice not to acknowledge it thus for this video we're going to take a look at 10 times seth rollins has trolled either his fellow wrestlers or wwe fans number 10 mystery opponent tweets cody returning to go up against rollins at wrestlemania mm -hmm. may go down as the worst kept secret in the yeah. wwe but thankfully we had someone who went all out to keep the mystery alive in order to stir some doubt about who his opponent would be rollins did what he knows how to do best trolling fans on social media he began tweeting out gifs of wrestlers who were highly unlikely to be his mystery <laughs> opponent but still had somewhat of a possibility such as veer shane mcmahon <laughs> mustafa ali and john cena then he slowly progressed into GIFs or wrestlers who had absolutely no chance of facing him, such as Bailey, Marco Stunt, <laughs> Scott Steiner, and Asuka. Heck, this man even put up a post of Will Smith in the height of his Oscar controversy. Yep, I remember even though that. his tweets were absurd, <laughs> it did exactly what he sought out to do, which was getting the fans to talk about the match and question if Cody was actually going to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. Number nine, John Cena's broken nose. In an episode of Monday Night Raw, John Cena suffered a gruesome nose injury after Seth And this was Seth Rollins' first heel run, and he was doing some great work there. Rollins struck him with a flying knee. This was obviously a horrible moment in Cena's life that he probably wants to keep in the past, but Rollins would never allow that to happen. So during a backstage segment, he walked towards Cena manically laughing before asking him if he remembered the time when his knee smashed into his face and broke it into a million pieces. When I put my knee directly into mm -hmm. your nose and broke your face into a million tiny pieces. He took his trolling a step further by saying that they are much alike, except the fact that he managed to successfully cash in his money in the big briefcase, whereas Cena was the first person to fail miserably. Mm -hmm. This is exactly the type of behavior you would expect from the person good, literally good trolling. A, you can't knee me shirt right after breaking <laughs> Cena's nose. Number eight, mocking a fan. No one is safe from the trolling antics of Seth Rollins, not even children. Mm -mm. Shortly after defeating Matt Riddle at Clash at the castle, Rollins headed towards the backstage area, but suddenly stopped when he noticed a kid in the front row was clearly upset by the outcome. He realized that this would be the perfect opportunity to show just how good of a heel he is, so he began mocking the kid by doing good. a crying gesture while saying, are you going to cry about it? Afterwards, he went back to celebrating his victory and orchestrating his theme song with the crowd, showing no remorse whatsoever. That's how you do it, man. That's done. how you be Number a good seven, heel, man. terrorizing the Mysterio family. Oh, this was good, too. will always be known oh. as the year that Seth Rollins oh. had an obsession with terror. Oh, man. We we need to relive this. Someone needs to tie him up in the ropes and beat the living crap out of Dominic with some kendo sticks. Oh, take us back. <laughs> Rising the Mysterio family. 
during his SummerSlam feud with Dominic Mysterio, who was about to have his first WWE match, Rollins brought up a traumatizing moment from the past to get in the head of his opponent. He tweeted out a photo of Dominic when he was just a child stuck in the middle of a rivalry involving Rey Mysterio mm -hmm. and Eddie I Guerrero battling each other for custody. Next to the scared young Dominic was a Photoshop <laughs> image of Rollins who had a wicked smile on his face resembling a villain you'd expect to see in the pages of a comic book. Even more perfect than the photo was the caption which read, the biggest decision in this young man's life, this SummerSlam will have to fight for himself. The trolling did not stop there. Good. When it was Fantastic. time for them to have a match, Rollins came out wearing an attire that was obviously copying the same design as Rey Mysterio's Halloween Havoc attire mm -hmm. against Eddie. This was done to once again get under the skin of the Mysterio family. He's fantastic at it, bro. A lot I love of it. Value, especially since that match is regarded as one of the best he's ever had. Seth Rollins continues to troll them even years later when he had a match with Rey Mysterio recently. Where he <laughs> the eye. Yeah, I remember eye that. Because a couple <laughs> years ago, Rey Mysterio literally almost lost his eye because of Seth Rollins in a feud. The man has no chill with his family. I feel bad for the Mysterios. <laughs> Number six, breaking into Edge's home. This was a on good one, too. Smackdown, Rollins invaded their Edge's feud was legendary. Love their impossible. feud. By breaking into his home and making it appear as if his family was in danger. Throughout the whole segment, Rollins' trolling tendencies were showing as he acted as if he owned the place. He raided Great. the fridge for some orange juice, kicked up his feet on the dining table, and then criticized Edge's daughter's artwork on the wall. This is he good. insulted them by saying that he knew that they were still very young, but they shouldn't expect to have a future career in the arts. He kept going on with the trolls as he looked up at the family photo and said that his daughter should be grateful that they look like Beth and not Edge. Finally, it ended with him comfortably sprawled out on Edge's love seat, eating an apple on one hand and turning the fireplace on with the other, claiming that he, <laughs> he could stay such here a all minute. night long. He Beth was... Phoenix recently tweeted about this by saying, One year ago, Rollins ate my apple and I really wanted that apple. Rollins replied by trolling and saying it's the best <laughs> apple he's ever eaten. The man does not miss. Number five, Fantastic. This one wasn't actually directed towards a particular fan or wrestler, but it was too hilarious to exclude from the list. Wrestlers experiencing a name change became quite common under the leadership of Vince McMahon, and Seth mm -hmm. Rollins was not an exception to this. For some reason, Vince thought it would be necessary to add freaking in the middle of his name, leading to a house show completely butchering it up. When advertising a match he had against Cody Rhodes, he was mistakenly referred to as Seth Franklin, Franklin Rollins, Rollins. <laughs> which was quickly joked about by fans all over social media, and he decided to play along with the fans by changing his Twitter <laughs> handle to Seth Franklin Rollins. This goes to show that he's- This is what makes Seth so good. He's self-aware. He's had his run-ins with you know the wrestling community, some of his comments in the past. If you guys remember when he was a face, he was saying a lot of outlandish shit. But he's definitely played into it with his heel uh, character, and it's it's pretty good. It's pretty entertaining, and you know I can appreciate little little nuggets like this of of you know just humor. I, I can appreciate that. It's capable of taking any situation, even something as simple as a name botch, and capitalizing off of it. Number four, Dusty's attire. Yep, this was the a good trilogy one too. Of matches between Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes ended with the grandest trolling scheme of them all. So At the good. Hell in a Cell, Rollins took off his robe to reveal that he was wearing a black and yellow polka dot gear, which Just was like clearly inspired father. from Dusty Rhodes' famous look. This was the ultimate form of disrespect yep. because it was done out of spite rather than to honor the legacy he left behind. So good. The match was difficult enough for Cody because he had to deal with the physical pain of tearing a peck, and now he also had to deal with the psychological pain of watching the man he's feuding with dress up as his dad. So At good. At the end of the day, though, Cody came out of the match victorious, proving that trolling doesn't always work in Rollins' favor. Number three, the Young Bucks copycat tweets. Everyone hmm. wants to have a piece of Seth Rollins' drip, even though who belong to a different wrestling promotion. The Young Bucks followed in the footsteps of Rollins oh, by bro. developing an... They're really flexing. If you guys... I'm, I'm going to go back just for you guys. These are the DR ones. Now, you're probably asking, what's so particular? What's so great about these? The DR ones are very expensive. You can find you a pair roughly about $10,000. They're very expensive. Roughly around that, I, I think that's probably the least you may pay is 10000 But it's more, you're going to be paying a lot. 
And the fact that they probably wrestled in these is ridiculous, bro. The Dio ones are very, very expensive, very rare. And the fact they just wrestling in them is fucking insane. Developing an extravagant fashion sense after turning heel. They were later accused of being unoriginal for wearing black leather jackets with fur collars, which is exactly what Rollins started to wear during his Monday Night Messiah gimmick. Surprisingly, this wasn't even the first time they blatantly copied his style. In the AW Dynamite special, The House Always Wins, the Young Bucks came out wearing Rollins' signature red leather jacket, oh, damn. which was a perfect match all the way down to the black fur collar. Oh, of wow. course, Rollins couldn't continue to ignore this, so he trolled them for being copycats. He posted a sarcastic tweet that read, Congratulations to my jacket on its successful trip through the forbidden door. As you can see, he handled <laughs> the situation funny. with humor rather than bitterness, making him a true professional. Number two, Matt Riddle's personal life. There comes a time when trolling gets taken to- And this was so damn good. I Honestly, the hype from it has died down, but this was great. Ah, this was so good. When he got personal, oh, chef's kiss. Oh, my God. It was one of the very few times I took Matt Riddle seriously. And, uh, bro, this was so good. Too far, evolving from harmless jokes to sickening comments about one's family. This and was this great. this example perfectly demonstrates that. On an episode of Raw, Rollins and Riddle had a sit-down interview to promote their match at Clash at the Castle, and it quickly escalated. Facts. It all began with Rollins acting like his typical self, wickedly laughing as he says that Riddle is not on his level. Then it took an unexpected turn after Riddle claimed that there is only one man in his relationship referring to Becky Lynch. Rollins' attitude completely shifted after that comment and his eyes darkened as he said, Let's Talk about your family. Oh, Ooh. you ain't got one because your wife divorced you and took your kids and they don't want to see you. <laughs> see your bitch ass anymore. anymore. <laughs> this feud went from Rollins mocking Riddle for using phrases like bro and dude to bringing up personal details about his life showing exactly how dangerous trolling can become. And number one, the Shield. Attack. This was a real it good one too. Match against Roman Reigns. So good. Rollins surprised everyone by taking a trip down the So lane. good. When it was time for his entrance, the iconic opening of the Shield theme song yeah. began playing, and the camera immediately scanned the crowd to show Rollins coming out with the black riot gear. He had a smirk plastered on his face because this he knew so good. this would remind Roman Reigns of all the moments they shared together during the Shield era, including the time Rollins stabbed him in the back and hit him with a steel chair. If this wasn't bad enough, Rollins even hit him with a shield bomb through the announcer's table mm -hmm. during the match. He was successful in a sense because he did get in the head of his opponent, but it was at his own expense because Roman refused to let go of a nah, submission he hold sent on him Rollins to the ending the match in a disqualification. Anyways, that is it for the That video. was Thanks good. Nah, him coming out to the shield music, bro, with the gear on, that, another chef's kiss, bro. Man. Rollins, he's like I said, he is easily doing some of the best work in his entire career. He is fantastic. He's one of the highlights of Monday Night Raw and just highlights in WWE in general. So comment down below. Let me know from this year only. We're going to keep it just 2022. What's your favorite feud and or match from Seth Rollins this year? Um, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. It, it's really tough. His Cody feud was really great. Um, the stuff, I think the stuff he did with Edge, that was that was last year. I believe that was last year. So the stuff, uh, I think the stuff he did with Roman Reigns was pretty good as well. Uh, I'm going to have to say the stuff he did with Cody was really great. I, I love that. The, the interaction they had, the stuff, bro, I, their matches have been fucking fantastic. I'm going to go with them, bro. Rollins versus Cody. This past year has been fantastic, man. So let me know your favorite match from Seth Rollins this year and or feud. But I appreciate all love and support. Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.